Today we continue in week two of our You Asked For It series. You Asked For It. Why do you call it You Asked For It? Because we put out a poll a couple weeks ago and asked some of your favorite messages. We gave you a few to choose from and y'all selected my three messages for these last three weeks. Last week we talked about At the Table. It was a great week, great message to, to go back through. This week we've chosen a Christmas story. And if you know, we did a Christmas story in three different walkthroughs. There's one particular today that I wanted to remind you about. As I was studying this week and trying to pick, we did, you'll shoot your eye out. Good advice and why we ignore it. Then we did week two, a major award. And then we did week three. And in week three, uh, we talked about identifying your enemies. And we talked about Scut Farkas. So if you heard Christmas music this morning, that's why. Because we're talking about a Christmas story today. And um, so I'm super excited about it. If you will, open your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 9. And we're going to jump into it today. As you're turning there, all throughout the movie of A Christmas Story, and those that don't know me very well don't know that this is my favorite Christmas movie of all time. I, I watch it on repeat in my home. My family does not enjoy it as much as I do, but that's all right. I still have my moments where I'm all alone <laughs> watching a Christmas story. And um, so in the movie, Old Man Parker is always trying to win contests. You'll always see him doing crossword searches or he, 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 he's entering into these things that are on the radio. Like all throughout, he's trying to get these awards. And one day, he gets this major award. He comes home, he's excited about it. He's got the telegram in his hand. He's pumped. He's like, I've won a major award. And they're like, what is it? And he's like, maybe it's a bowling alley. I don't know. And she's like, why, why would he deliver a bowling alley? And as you all know, he had a major award. That looked like this. It's bigger. But it was the leg lamp. This was the major award. Of course, only him. Being the proud owner of it, winning it, is the only one that truly understood how great this major award was. Why? Because he's the one that put in the work for it. Nobody else understood. You don't know. You don't know. You know how many times I tried to send in my answer or dial in or whatever to get this contest won? You don't know. This is my major award, and he worked towards it. He was so proud of it. But I want to talk about a major award that we're working towards. So if if you've already made it to 1 Corinthians chapter 9, I'm going to read three verses to you. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24 through 27. First Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24 through 27. Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one receives the prize? So run that you may obtain it. Every athlete exercises self-control in all things. They do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we an imperishable. So I do not run aimlessly. I do not box as one beating the air, but I discipline my body and keep it under control, lest after preaching to others, I myself should be disqualified. Ladies and gentlemen, we are all living for a reward, an award. And I love how Paul writes to the church of Corinth in this, in this letter. If you understand, Paul always would write these letters when there were things going on and issues that needed to be handled and he couldn't get there, he would pen a letter and send it to them. And a lot of times they've compiled this. What, what we've come to realize is some of these are like different letters all in kind of in one. Because so, there was different things that would come out as, as he was writing and he was wanting to address those issues. And Paul wrote in such a way that they could understand it. Aren't you glad that Paul spoke their language? For some of us, we hear running races. There's so many other sports now that there wasn't when Paul was writing this. They didn't have basketball. They didn't have football. They didn't have baseball. They didn't have all those things. Running was the Olympic, like that was the thing. If you were the top in the, in, the, in the culture, it was to be a runner. And he was speaking to them in such a way that these people that run are disciplined. Anybody in here ever tried to run before? Y'all laugh because y'all are like, no. <laughs> run? Are you kidding me? If somebody's chasing me, they're just going to get me. It's my time. Thank you, Lord, for taking me now. Amen. <laughs> but there's discipline to it. 
There's discipline to it. As I've gone through this journey of long distance running, listen, before 2020, I didn't run. That's why I like basketball and football. Football, you got to run for about 20 seconds, and then you got to go get in a huddle and huff and puff and then get back on the line and do it again. Basketball is only 90 feet long, so, I mean, you didn't have to run very far, except they put the biggest guys on the box, so you actually had to run the whole court. Point guards get to stand at the top, make the pass, and just take a few steps back and play defense. They got us big guys running. But when you go long distance, there are things that you have to fight to complete the actual race. There are a lot of things. You have to have discipline of staying focused. You start running, you're like, hum dum hum dum You start looking off, next thing you know, your pace is off. You've slowed down. You have, to have, uh, you have to stay purposeful and engaged. The discipline of your breathing, the discipline of pushing through pain moments, the discipline of not getting bored with how long you're running. Like There's a lot of things that you have to be mindful of when you are disciplining your body to run. It's the same thing with our walk of faith. You must discipline yourself as you walk and run this race according to the Spirit. A lot of us go through these things in our lives. We've got to make sure that we are mindful of not getting bored with it. we got to stay mindful of the fact that we're not getting bored with this run that we are running. Because so many of us just see in front of us. And then sometimes when pain moments come, we slow our pace or we start walking. Knowing that if we would just push through this one moment, we would be able to finish the race. But most of us don't have a high pain tolerance. And I'm not just talking about physically, I'm talking about spiritually. Something goes south for just a moment and we're like, God, you abandoned me. And we dip. The pastor says something that we don't agree with and it rubs us the wrong way. I'm going to go hear somebody else that won't do that to me. Our spiritual disciplines are so weak. And we've got to realize that we're running for a bigger purpose than just day to day. We have eternal purpose, ladies and gentlemen. And we've got to realize that it is a bigger picture. When you're running a 5K and you've got three point something miles to go, you're in that one moment. You're like, man, this stinks. But if you could fast forward and see yourself at the end, completing the race, feeling good about yourself, it will push you to work harder and to finish. But so many people in church don't want to see true freedom in their life. They don't see that moment where they're like, I'm not who I used to be. I'm not in a lifestyle that's going to continue to take from me and not give back to me. I'm not going to be at a place where I'm just strung out or I'm addicted to so many things. I see myself on the other side where this freedom feels so good because there is a yoke and a burden that is light and easy. But we want to give up so quick because we don't want to run and obtain towards the prize. It comes with much discipline. It's easy to fall off. And to stray from Galatians 5 verse 7 Galatians chapter 5 verse 7 says you are running a good race who cut in on you to keep you from obeying the truth Woo! if that don't sound like the followers of Jesus today man you was running good you were coming to church you were dedicated to the things of God you were committed you were passionate you were active you did all you checked all the boxes On the identifiers of Journey Church, you were doing good. Who cut in the way and obstructed you from getting to the truth? Who got in front of you and deterred you off? Who was it? There are things in life that will try and step in and distract you from the truth of the word. And when you are disciplined, you're able to withstand those distractions. But so many people of the Lord, we're running such a great race, but someone has slid in and kept us from obeying the truth. I'm going to give you a, a list of some of these things that will try and slide in. Social media. Social media. This is is prevalent for the the older generation in the room, but my younger generation that's here today. There are people that are going to, they, they are, in social media, they are elevating the way that they're living their lives, and they're trying to show you all these rewards that it brings, but you never see behind that veil. You see all the winning. You see all the cars. You see all the fame. You see all the things. But you don't see what they see when that door is closed and no one else is in that room and can't see on the other side of that phone. Battling and struggling, fighting to find something better because they know all that they've been given still isn't enough. But we'll look at social media and we'll be like, man, everything's going so good with them. They've got such a great life. They've got such great things. And here I am living for Jesus and none of my friends want to talk to me anymore. 
I don't have money, I don't have cars, I don't have fame, I don't have any of that. They'll even tell you, if you want to go into fame, don't try and go in the Christian music world. Don't sing for Jesus. You need to go sing about things that people are going, that, that they like, and you'll make the money. Like, they will divert you from it. Yeah. You have to be very careful. Sometimes your family members or your children, I've talked about this before. I've talked about the, the fact that I can be reading my Bible, and um, I'll be reading my Bible in my quiet time when I've got some time to sit down, and my kids will come and be like, hey, Dad, will you come play with me? Will you come hang out with me? Yeah, sure, pause, get up, go, and then never come back to it. And some of you are like, well, you're a dad. You should go play with your kids. Yes, but if I am giving up all of my time with the Lord for my kids, I've missed it. God is number one in my life. He is number one. I love my children to death. I am so grateful. I mean, you can ask my wife. If I'm at home, and they are, I'm in the floor, I'm on the couch, we're playing games, we're on the trampoline. Like, I hang out with my kids all the time. All the time. But I cannot let that distract me from running this race of faith. Hear me. It's okay to say, no, I need to go spend time with the Lord for an hour. Because I'm going to spend four more hours with you later. That one hour is not going to make your kid go, my parent was never there for me. They abandoned me for Jesus. I don't want none of him because they took my parents from me. That's not what's going to happen. But they can come in and they can distract you. Friends. Friends can distract you. 1 Corinthians 15, Do not be deceived. Bad company ruins good morals. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33. Do not be deceived. Bad company ruins good morals. But man, they are my dogs. Those are my homies. That's great. But if their morals aren't lining up with your biblical morals, they don't need to be your dogs and your homies. They don't need a place at that inner circle. You can still hang and love on each other, but on your terms. At your place. Where you set the, you set the standards. You set what we're going to do. You've got to guard yourself, ladies and gentlemen. You've got to guard yourself. For some in the room, a boyfriend or a girlfriend will try to distract you. And that ain't just for the teenagers in the room. That's for the adults. That's for the adults. Because let me tell you something. Adult boyfriend and girlfriends will distract you way more than a teenage boyfriend or girlfriend. Teenage boyfriend and girlfriends is like, all right, there's other fish in the sea. That's what's up. Cool. As you get older, you're like, this might be the only one that ever comes along. <laughs> That's not a hit at anybody. I'm just saying, like, as I've talked to people, they're like, this got to be the one. Not many, not many fish in this pond. I ain't got bites in three years. <laughs> but they'll come along and then you feel like you've got to give them things to win them. And a lot of times that means stepping off the path of running your race to Jesus. You'll step off of that path to go down their path. And before you realize that they've left you, they, they've used you, left you, and abused you in so many different ways. And then you wake up one day. And the good thing about God is he is loving and he will bring you back into the path and love on you. But why go through that? Why go through that? Why go through that? Our flesh will get in the way. Our, spirit, our, our flesh will fight day in and day to, to fulfill it and not the things of the flesh. A new job coming along that's going to give you more hours. I see so many people like, man, this is the job for me. God has opened this door and you walk into it and the only thing it's done for you is taking you away from the things of God. It's just completely taking. Yeah, money might be good, but is that what God wants for you? Or is that what I want for me? We all want more money. I mean, I, I'll be honest with you. I mean, it'd be nice taking an extra vacation or have another vehicle in my, in my, at, at my house. You know, mine's like 15, 16 years old. We're running that thing. It runs on gas and the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. No, because you do have to pray in tongues driving that thing. <laughs> Kids will come out and go, are we going in that or the, the Jeep? <laughs> So again, we all have those things in our life, but if we look at it and we weigh it on the scales and it goes, man, it's going to take away from the things of God, I don't want it. I'll walk to work. I'll walk to the gas station. If it's going to come in the way of me and him, I don't want it. 
I don't want it because all that's going to do is give me another car payment that I have to make and then i got to go hustle and try and pull money from the man so that I can pay the man. So you've got to look at things differently and realize I am disciplined. Come along and go, hey, you're running this race. We'd all love a bike. You can ride this bike. Everybody else is going to be running. Say less. I'm getting on that thing. And you're riding and you get to the end of it and go, you're disqualified because you rode a bike you didn't run. That temporary thing that will stop the pain that you're in, that you use to escape it, is the thing that will disqualify you from the race. I hope you're catching what I'm saying. I know that's a little deep and it's a little like, what do you mean? A bike is a good thing. But if it's not allowed in the race, sin is not allowed in the race of righteousness. So when you ride sin to fulfill things in your life and not continue to race, it will disqualify you at the end of the race. You will stand before the Lord and say, Lord, but I hear I finished. No, you rode that bike. You didn't come the way I said you needed to come. Be careful of what you're allowing to come in and to ride on and to, to ease that temporary pain in that moment. Another thing is hurt and frustration. So many people leave the church because of hurt. Somebody hurt me. They hurt us all. <laughs> they hurt us all, but I ain't here for them. I'm not here for them. God's called me to much more than that. He has called me much more to that. And so when you listen to their voice, you have put it above the voice of the Lord. What does God say about it? What does God say about it? Whew. There are so many things that we have to pay attention to that we do not get distracted. Remember, we are running for an eternal reward. We're running for a crown in heaven. I, I, we say this all the time. Billy Graham will be putting so many crowns at the feet of Jesus. I want that to be said about me. Why, why does it just got to be Billy Graham? He doesn't just reward all those that have these televangelist things. He rewards those that live a life of righteousness and say yes to him each and every single day. Like, I'm, I'm laying some crowns that y'all going to have to wait in line for me too. Billy Graham, you're going to have to hold on a minute, brother. We're going to be here for a second. An eternity with the Father. A place that there is no more pain, no more hurt, no more crying, no more tears. A place that is for eternity. And we can't fathom eternity. I was talking to Colin about this in the car the other day. He's like, how long is eternity? That's a long time, right? I'm like, yeah, it's a really long time. He's like, it, that hurts my brain. And I was like, it hurts mine too, bud. I was like, we can't fathom eternity because everything has an end here. Time ends, classes end, seasons end. Every, our lives end, everything, but in heaven there is no end. We can't fathom that. And so we've got to realize that we are living for an eternity with him. And then in the current, because eternity begins when we say yes to him, that, that, that separation, whether we, you know, whether we die or not before Jesus comes back, when we say yes to him, that separation will not happen after that unless we walk away. But we also receive fruits of the Spirit in our life to be able to function and do in our life. So how do we stay disciplined? Look at what Paul says. How do we stay disciplined? So I do not run aimlessly. The New Living Translation says, I run with purpose in every step. I run with purpose in every step. Can I, can I pause for just a second? I feel like the Holy Spirit is wanting me to say this. Guys, if you'll read your Bible, he gives you the answers. He tells you what to do. He will say, you need to run your race. Well, how am I supposed to do that? Run every step with purpose. So now I need to make sure that everything I'm doing in my life has purpose. Do we have a lot going on in our lives right now as a family? Absolutely. And I told somebody the other day, I was glad it all has purpose behind it, though. We're not just working towards things that are going to burn up in the fire at the end of the day. We are, we, are, we, are, we are hustling for the kingdom of God. But let me just encourage you in that. If you have questions about things, get in your word. Open the Bible and ask questions. Come to a journey group and say, man, I read this scripture this week. Can you just help me dissect it? Can we get coffee tomorrow morning? And let's just sip on a cup of coffee before we go to work. I just got a few questions for you. And ask, but it tells you. So how do we train ourselves and discipline ourselves? We run with purpose in every step. How many of us are living our spiritual life with purpose? Not our physical life, our spiritual life with purpose. How do we do that? How do we make sure we're purposeful? I'm going to give you that answer. You ready? Read your word con uh, consistently. Journal what you read and how does it apply? I talked to you about the SOAP method back in December, S-O-A-P. 
The SOAP method, S-O-A-P. Scripture, observe, application, and pray. Read Scripture, observe what you've just read, how will it apply to your life, and pray through it. Another thing that we just learned this past couple weeks is you ask four questions about it. What does it tell me about God? What does it tell me about man? What sin does it tell me to stay from? And what examples does it set for my life? Four very easy questions that will sp- you could spend two hours journaling and talking about in your life. Or you can spend 20 minutes. But it's consistently reading your Bible and praying and journaling what's happening. You need to, another way you can be purposeful is take hold of the promises from the Word and pray them over yourself. 1 Corinthians tells me that when I accept Jesus, I am now a new creation. So those old desires of my flesh that try to come up, yeah, they're still going to come knocking at the door, but you don't have to open it up. They can't make you do anything anymore. That sin has no power and rank. You are not a slave to it anymore. You have been set free from it. So take that scripture and stand on it. Corinthians also tells us that, that any thought that raises itself against the will of God, we can take it captive and cast it out. You have power over your thoughts, ladies and gentlemen. You have power over your thoughts. If you have a a thought of fear in your life, you can take that captive because that's against God because he did not create you with a spirit of fear, but with power, love, and a sound mind. So you can take that thought and take it, how do you take it captive? Nope, that thought is not allowed in my mind. Say it out loud if you have to. That thought is not allowed. I am not afraid. I, I will not fear. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, God. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. I will fear nothing. Your flesh might be doing this number right here while you're saying it. But inside, your spirit man is going, come on, keep stepping. Keep walking. And eventually it's going to click and you're going to just start stepping with purpose. And you're going to start realizing, I don't have to live in fear anymore. I don't have to live. Well, you're worthless. You were an accident. You're not who, who you're supposed to be. John 3.16 is one that I have learned how to tag to people's lives now. You want to know how valuable you are? For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. You are worth Jesus. You are worth the blood of Jesus. If you try to go for any other person's say about you, you are putting them above God. So when they look at you and go, you are are worthless, you go, oh, maybe to you, baby. But not to my father. You can say all you want to to me, but I know I am worth the very blood of Jesus Christ. Woo! How do you walk with purpose? Take hold of the promises. Another way is pray. Be intentional about praying, not Lord bless this food or Lord help me get to, the, to work safe today or Lord don't let me slap somebody in this office today. Wait, I pray those prayers sometimes too. The team's like, what? <laughs> But you pray, Lord, I, just don't let, me, don't let the spirit of slap come on me. Let the spirit of love and forgiveness and joy overflow. Take power of my tongue. No man can tame the tongue, but the spirit, Lord, you can. Amen. But be intentional about praying. Get alone with the Lord. Write things down. Speak things over your family. Ladies and be, fellas and ladies, be intentional about If you're looking for someone, pray intentionally about it. Pray intentionally about it. Lord, I want a woman of God. I don't want to find her out there and bring her into here. I need you to bring her to me. I'm not trying to convert her. I need you to convert her. Because if I convert her, her faith is based on me, not on you. Gentlemen, I should have seen a bunch of notepads coming out. Y'all should have been writing notes right there. Ladies, Lord, I need a man of God. One that sees me for the value that I truly am. One that will honor me like the queen that I am. One that understands I am your daughter. And I deserve the best. And then write in that journal, and Lord, may he come and already have a relationship with you and be saved based on you and not on me. Because if he's saved based on me, his faith lies in me and not in you. And when storms come, I don't want him to look to me. I want him to look to you. You got to pray these things intentionally. Intentionally, not, Lord, I saw this cute dude yesterday. 
He was real cute. I mean, like, real cute. And his voice was like butter. <laughs> Jesus, just let him be the one. Let him show up at Journey Church, 3719 Shelby Road, Millington, Tennessee. <laughs> I'll be there at 945 this Sunday eating a chocolate donut and a coffee. And if he comes up and says, oh, no donut with sprinkles, I know it's of you, God. <laughs> Not talking about being that intentional. <laughs> But you've got to guard what you're saying and what you're praying. You really do. You really do. I, I tell people this all the time. I, I, we were fasting. We were fasting in, I believe it was 2012, 2013. And I wrote in my, in my prayer journal, I just wrote things about my wife. I had not met her yet. I had wrote all these things. And then later on, I met, I met Hope. We got married in the Lord. I was going through journals every once in a while. I flipped back through a couple of them. And I came across that page. And literally just, pew, 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 pew. I, I put even that she can sing. Literally is in my journal. Literally is in there. I was like, man, the only thing I missed was her height. <laughs> no joke, 5'7 was in my journal. I got 4'11 and I'm loving it. <laughs> Powerful things come in small packages. Hey! But walk with purpose. Walk with purpose. Where are we at right now? I don't even know what's going on. Whoo, all right. <laughs> but listen, Paul also says, I'm not just shadow boxing. He said, I'm not just throwing punches in the wind. Do we need to practice our punches? Yes. You ever watched a trainer, you ever watched a fighter train for a fight? Most of those punches he's practicing is because he's going to use them in a fight. That's because when it comes time and he gets, listen, Mike Tyson says everybody has a plan until they get punched in the mouth. <laughs> Try it. I'm going to love like Jesus. Bah! You look. No, you know what I mean? Like we all have a plan until you get punched in the mouth. But you've got to be so intentional with what you're doing so that when you get into a fight, you're ready for it. But he's saying, I'm not just beating at the wind. I make sure I identify the thing that I'm fighting. I'm not just throwing hands going, Lord, let it land, let it land, let it land. Like, I'm no, nope, right here. And I bring this up a lot. I bring this up a lot because I do believe that there are still people fighting with this. But generational curse, you need to come on over here and let me throw some hands for a little bit. Okay? Loneliness, you need to come over here. I need to throw some hands for a bit. You have to be purposeful about it. I'm not just ten, attending church, but I'm living out the Great Commission. I'm not just pretending. I'm not just swinging, hoping I hit something. I'm intentional. Someone say intentional. intentional. Y'all, life is short. We don't have time to be playing around. We must be a people who are intentional. But I discipline my body and keep it under control. Another statement from Paul. It says, I train it to do what it should. Your flesh does not run to gain a prize of kingdom gain. It runs to fulfill its own pleasures. And that does not re reap a reward worth eternity. Worth eternity. I, I drive past um, Faith Assembly every Sunday morning, every day of the week, 51, up there on the left if you're coming into Millington. And on their, on their sign, it, no, is it, is it Faith Assembly that says it? I've seen it on a couple church signs. They said, uh, Jesus is coming back, don't miss it for the world. That's them. Don't miss it for the world. And I'm just like, I'm like, oh, that's cool, that's cool. And then the Holy Spirit's like, there are a lot of people that will miss the coming because they love the world more than they love me. Yeah. It's true. It's true. But you, you cannot do those things. So in this room, you need, to assess your, uh, you need to assess yourself today. How are you running? Is it intentional? Not physically, spiritually. What reward are you headed for? If you continue on the path that you're on, where are you going? What is it going to reap? What is it bringing? You can look at the fruit that's coming out of you already. Is your temper this, I mean, is your patience this short? Is, is, is love and joy and peace and patience and kindness missing in your life? You're running for the wrong thing. You're running for the wrong thing. Continue to run and discipline yourself. Lest you preach to others but perish yourself. This is one I hold on to. I'm like, Lord, don't make me, I don't want to be up here preaching all of these things to people, and then the trumpet blow, and they come to church, and I'm here in the pulpit ready to preach again. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to miss it. I don't want to miss it, so I have to be intentional as well. Don't be busy pointing out everyone else that you neglect yourself. 
and not obtain the prize. I always tell people this, like, we're the best quarterbacks on our couch. If you ever watch a game, you're like, that dude was wide open. Why didn't he see him? Why are we worried about everybody else? Let's focus on us. Let's focus on us. Don't just do it because you feel like it. Train your body to do what it's supposed to do. Being a follower of Jesus is not about just doing it when I feel like it. And I have tried to preach this, and I want to plug abide next week. Next week we are preaching abide. I'm going to try to do one and two all in one. But part one is one of my favorite messages that the Lord has ever given me. Abide part one next week. We're coming together and it's talking about abiding in him. Abiding in him. And when we abide in him, we don't do it when we feel like it. We do it all the time. We stay connected to the source. You have to train your body to do it even on the days you don't want to. So here's my closing. I'm actually going to go ahead and, Christina, will you come up and play for me today? Man. First Corinthians 9, 24 says it this way. And I want I want and the reason I wanted to jump back to this is because I declared it over you in December. I want to see where you're at in June. Some of you didn't get to hear it in December, so I'm challenging you today. First Corinthians 9, 24 says this in the New Living Translation. Don't you realize that in a race, everyone runs, but only one person gets the prize. So run to win. Run to win. Only one person gets the prize, so run to win. I'm not running just to make it by. I'm running to win. When I run to win, I make it a purpose to blow past the people in front of me. When I run to win, I am living life intentionally with full purpose because I know that there is something that I'm running for. So many in the people in the church today, we just run to get by. We just run to say that we ran. I'm telling you today, as Paul did, run to win. Run to win. When you walk out of these doors today, run to win. Not for a participation trophy, but to obtain the reward. Run to win. When you hear a report from the doctor, run to win. When your family is fighting hell, run to win. When you walk into 2022, this is what I told you in December. Run to win. Where are you at in June 2022? Are you crawling? Have you already forgotten to be intentional about everything that you do spiritually? Have you allowed the year? Listen, throw all of our resolutions out the door. I set them every year because I love to do it and put it in my journal. And like most of you, by like the third or fourth month, them check boxes get real, real, real empty. Real empty. But what I'm saying to you today is, yes, I missed it, but today is a new day. Today is a day that I'm running to win. I said I was going to, and there have been so many things thrown at me in 2022 that it took my my gaze off the prize. We need to run to win. We need to run with a confidence. I'm flaunting my award. It's been well earned. It's been well disciplined for. It's been well fought for. That's why I said, Billy Graham, you can wait too, bro. Because I ran to win. I ran to win. We can't be nice and cute in the church anymore. Enemy, I'm running to win. The people I saw at the air show yesterday to see some airplanes, Jesus, I'm going to run to win because I want them to show up like that for you. I'm going to run to win, and I don't care what the community says to me or what people do. I'm running for a award. I'm running for it. I'm not prancing around. I'm not walking. I'm running. Because why? I'm not cocky about it. I'm confident. I'm confident. I know the one that I trust in. I know the one that I run for. Confidence comes when you work for it. You know why some of those guys seem cocky? It's because they know the hours they put in for work. To get up there and do what they do the best. Run to win, Journey Church. Run to win. Don't give up. Those that are still running from the beginning of 2022, don't stop. Don't stop. I wanted to read a scripture to you today as we close it out. 
Isaiah 40, super familiar passage of Scripture. Isaiah 40, 29 through 31. He gives power to the faint. And to him who has no might, he increases strength. Even youths shall faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. What does that mean? You're telling me to run, it's telling me to wait. I'm telling you, when you're in the presence of the Lord and you're running for Him, you are waiting for His strength. He is the one that is giving you the strength. But when you run it according to yourself, you will faint and you will fall. If you find yourself spiritually running out of breath, you are running in your own strength. You've got to be reminded. This is Listen, this is a personal scripture to me this morning. I was sitting in my office this morning, looking over my message, yawning, because it has been a long, long month. Long month. And yesterday was hot. And it was a long day. And fryers and griddles don't make it any better. And I just sat there and I was like, Lord, I'm so tired. So tired. I told my wife this last night. Like, I'm, I'm just exhausted. I'm exhausted. And for some of you, you've seen me this morning. You're like, bro, you didn't look like it. Look like you had like three pastor's punches. I had, a, I had a huge dose of the Holy Spirit in my office this morning. And he said, you're running on your own strength. You need to be reminded to wait upon the Lord. And I will renew your strength so that you can mount up on wings like eagles and soar, and you will run and you will not faint. Run to win, Timothy. Run to win. Journey Church, fellow believers, whether you're on Facebook, YouTube tomorrow, or in this room today, or months from now watching this back, you're running in your own power, and the Lord wants to remind you to wait upon Him, and He will renew your strength, and you will run and you will not faint. You will walk and you will not grow weary. Every head bowed and every eye closed. If you will, actually, everybody stand with me today. two things. First one is this. I, 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 I want to offer Jesus. If you've, you've come today and you're like, I'm coming because I need to ask Jesus into my heart and you feel like it needs to happen today, I want to give you that opportunity. I really do. I don't want this moment to pass and you have not had that opportunity except Jesus. You've been doing things your own way. You've been running in your own strengths and you have, as we sang earlier, I've broken it all. It's pieces. I came with my pieces today. And Lord, I just need you to put it back together. I just need you to fix it. And I want you to, what that means is he's going to be Lord of your life now. He's going to come in. He's going to save you and forgive you of those things. He's going to begin to mend you, that brokenness, put you back together. And you're going to now live your life for him. You're going to live your life doing things the way he wants you to do them. So if you're in the room today, every head bowed and eyes closed. We do this just so that they can feel comfortable I am going to ask you to come forward so when you raise your hand, just have that understanding because the reason I do that is for a couple reasons. Heads bowed and eyes closed. I know I'm talking a little bit. But the reason we ask people to come forward is we want you to know, number one, you're not alone. That there is a body of of brothers and sisters behind you that are going to cheer you on because we clap when you come because we are celebrating someone going from death to life. Secondly, you have to let your flesh know It's easy to sit there and raise your hand and say, I want to accept that prayer. But to take the step out and walk, now your flesh is going, whoa, 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 whoa. Where are we going? What are we trying to do right now? And you're like, no, I've been running according to you way too long. And I need to go up there and make this public declaration that I'm giving my life to Jesus. That's why we do it. Not to embarrass you or to count a number or to look at what you've been doing in your life. All of it is to celebrate. And to set you up to live your life for him and to defeat your flesh right off the bat. Right off the bat. So if you're in the room today and you say, you know what, Pastor, I came with the intentions to give my life to Jesus. And I want to do that today. 
on the count of three, or maybe the message spoke to you or worship time spoke to you, and you say, I want to give my life to the Lord today. If that's you on the count of three, all I'm going to ask you to do is just raise your hand. One, two, three. Raise your hand if that's you. Thank you for that hand. Thank you, Lord. Any other hands? Just hold it up for just a second. Thank you for that hand over here. Thank you for those hands. Thank you for those hands. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you're still in the business of saving the lost, saving the broken, saving the wayward son or daughter. Not necessarily those that raise their hand maybe have been lost, but maybe they just went away and a prodigal son is coming home today, God, or daughter. Thank you, Jesus. You can put your hands down. And this last one is for those of us that we made the commitment to run into 2022, but we've allowed things to distract us. And my hand is up right now because I'm responding to this one. I needed the Lord to breathe on me this morning. I needed him to remind me of Isaiah 40, that I was trying to do it in my own strength. And I needed his strength. I needed him. And I have allowed things to distract me from running with intentional purpose. So if you're in the room today and that's you and you want to say, no, man, I'm, I'm running to win. I am running to win. Or today I've been running, but I needed to be reminded that I needed that fresh touch from the Lord. If that's you, on the count of three, if you'll just raise your hand. One, two, three. Raise your hand for me today. Thank you. Hands all over the place. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. It's so easy to get caught up. It's so easy to get distracted. Even people... Like me, who does, I do this every day of my life. It's still easy to get distracted, and there's no shame in it. Thank the Lord that He reveals to us that when our life is out of check, and that He's loving to check us back into it. So here's what I'm going to ask. Two of you raised your hand for salvation. If you will, do me the honor to come just right here to the front, and then there's others that are going to come as soon as you come, right after you, so you're not up here alone the whole time. But if you will, uh, if you raise your hand, just come to the front for me uh, just real quick, real briefly. Those that raise their hands for salvation. It's all right. It's all right. Come on, church. No shame. No shame. Just forgiveness and love. now for those in the room that raised your hand to answer the second call I want you to come go ahead and come on down this morning man As you can see from the people around you, you're not alone. You're not alone. Your pastor is responding to this one too. <laughs> I'm here. I'm with you today. I just want you to be reminded. I'm going to read it over you again in just a moment. That you don't have to do it on your own. He never called you to do this on your own. Jesus actually said, it's good for me to go. Ain't it crazy that not crazy, but awesome that Jesus told the disciples, it's better that I can go so that the Holy Spirit can come. Why? So that he can be with us everywhere we go and everywhere that we are to give us the strength that we need. He has not called you to do it on your own. He has said, not by your might or by your power, but by my spirit is what the Lord has said. Yes. And so today is just a reminder that, Lord, I'm running and I'm not doing it in my own strength. I need you today. I need you today. And for my sister this morning, 
that's asking Jesus to just come in and forgive and to make clean and to make whole. We celebrate you today. And so all we're going to do is this. As we're praying, you just confess with your mouth, Lord, I, I confess that I need you to come into my life. Forgive me my sin. It doesn't have to be a certain prayer. It doesn't have to be certain words. He sees your heart. I've seen a guy get saved going, Jesus, I don't know what to say, but I need you. And then the Lord just touched him and it was, it was over. We don't have to say certain prayers or do it certain ways. Our, it's our hearts. And he hears this more than he hears our mouths. But we do have to declare with our mouth. The word tells us to declare it with our mouth. But you just, you, you just tell him what you want to say to him today. And just say, Lord, forgive me of this and make me whole today and make me new. And he'll be, he'll be faithful to forgive. And for the rest of us in the room, we're going to raise our hands. We're going to ask the Lord to just come near today. So if you will raise your hands for me. Raise your hands, those that are in the pew that are still running. Y'all reach your hands this way to them. And let's pray over our brothers and sisters today. God, today we need you. We have tried so long and so hard this year to do it on our own might, our own strength, our own accord, our own power. But you did not create this race to run that way. You gave us your spirit, a helper, a comforter in times of need, Lord, to come close and to help us. And so today, Lord, I'm asking, as you reminded me this morning in my office, as I sat there looking over a message that I, had to, that I got to preach today, Lord, you just reminded me yet again that you are with me. That you will never leave me nor forsake me. And as David said in the Psalms, where can I go that your spirit cannot be with me? No height or depth can we go that you are not there, God. And so I thank you for it. Refresh us today. Breath of fresh wind today upon our, your people, God. And that we would be renewed with strength. And Lord, I am praying and speaking and blessing your people today with your scripture. He gives power to the faint. And to him who has no might, he increases strength. Today, God, increase our strength. Increase our might. Because, Lord, we are asking for you to give us your power. Not our own, but yours today, God. Even youth shall faint and be weary, and young meals shall fall and be exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. Renew your people's strength today, God. Renew our strength today in a new way, God. Not something that was in the tank that you just brought back to life, but a new outpouring of your spirit on us today. A renewing of strength we've never walked in before, God. That we will walk in it, God. So that when you do that, we will mount up with wings like eagles. We will run and not be weary. And we will walk and not faint. This week as we run to win and we be intentional, God. May we do it in your power and in your might. We love you, Jesus. Thank you for this sweet reminder. Thank you for this sweet reminder. And those that are down here, can you begin with your own words to thank the Lord for this today? Thank Him for that renewed strength. Thank Him for that new empowerment. Thank Him for giving us His Spirit today so that when we run, we won't faint. God, thank You that You are doing it. That You're doing it. It's such a sweet and wonderful thing, God, that You do it individually. It's not just a, a pouring out and we just all get a little piece of the pie. No, Lord. You give us whole, whole cakes, whole pies to enjoy and to walk in and to, to, to feast off of. And I thank You for that, Lord. Thank you that it's an outpouring in each and every one of us. We seal this moment, God. This isn't just a feel-good moment. This is a life-changing moment. This is a, my, a moment that we are reminded yet again why we do what we do. And that we will run to win. Now, Lord, I declare over your people that they will run to win. And continually declaring Isaiah over them that when they run, they will not faint. When they walk, they will not grow weary. So, Lord, protect us, be with us, and guide us in that run. And it's in your mighty, precious name we pray. Everyone said amen and amen and amen. Can you tell somebody that came down with you, you look renewed today. You look renewed.